Okay, let's uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. We bless your name. We give you praise, Father God. We thank you for who you are. Lord, we thank you that, uh, Lord, um, everything that we have, Lord, flows from you, Lord, even as you are the vine and we are the branches. We thank you for the life that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for we are made in your image, spirit, soul, and body. Father, we thank you for the abilities that you've given us, Lord, that comes from you, Father God. We thank you for the restoration, Lord, Lord even if there is a... Lord, uh, a brokenness or a Lord, a marring of the image of Father God. We thank you for the restoration that is possible because of the cross and that is available for us because of the cross. And Father, we thank you that creativity flows from you, wisdom flows from you, Lord, and skills and abilities, Lord, flow from you, Father God. And Father, this morning, we just want to thank you for that. We receive that, Lord. And yes, Master, we press on, Father God, even, Lord, if we, if we Lord, uh, have com been comparing ourselves to others and Thinking that we are, uh, we are, you know, we do not, we we lack some things. Lord, I pray we will stop that whole, um, Lord, that whole behavior of comparing, comparing ourselves, Lord. And uh, even when, if we, if we, if we do compare, let it just to learn and to, and to celebrate the other person and to, and to really learn things, Father God, so they can we can better ourselves, God, Master. We, we thank you. For this day, we commit the, all the classes, um, and especially this one, into your mighty hands. We thank you in Jesus' matchless name. We pray, Amen. Okay. So, um, um, yeah, today we'll uh, look at um, what we left off last class. Um, oh, last class we didn't have right. So we we looked at peep, uh, chapter eight, which is about people. And uh, we um, looked at um, one was motivating, inspiring, and also we looked at some of the other aspects of, you know, feedback and um, and also you know making some hard decisions when it comes to you know when it comes to dealing with people. Yeah, we've been studying about managing people, which is a very important skill for us to have, uh, both professionally and also in ministry. Right. So, so today let's look at another interesting. Um, topic which is uh, related to people which is um, resolution of conflict okay so when we say resolution of conflict we're talking about solving um, people uh, conflict with people right so um, let's um, look at the notes okay so we are looking at uh, conflict resolution or resolving conflicts so so one of the things that we need to understand is that uh, conflict is not something uh, because we live in a fallen world, right? And because we are unique and different, conflict is bound to happen. So we we need not be, you know, surprised or shocked when there is conflict, and at the same time we need not be, you know, kind of discouraged or completely withdrawn, you know, saying, oh, you know, I'm in ministry, and uh, you know, I'm doing this for God and God is using me in these ways and all that and and you know here is a conflict you know especially in areas like marriage you know we think that oh we had a you know we were not fighting at all and then suddenly we have this conflict and you know it's, it's the end of the world no it's not the end of the world conflict is bound to happen right and especially uh, in, in a professional setting where we have uh, or in a ministerial setting where we have a, we are working with teams, we are working with people of different temperaments and uh, people with uh, you know different levels of maturity and so on. Um, conflict is bound to happen, but we need to understand you know identifying conflict and also solving conflict as a as a skill to have that mindset that hey, this is something that we can solve. You know, there's no conflict that cannot be you know solved. So. Um, that's a mindset. That's a good uh, perspective to have, right? So, whether it's a church, whether it's a ministry, whether it's uh, you know, uh, whether it's a work uh, work situation, yes, we are bound to have conflicts. Okay. So, what is a conflict? It's a struggle. It is a context contest. It's a battle. You know, those are some intense words: battle, or collision, uh, a struggle. Right. The basic. The way in which a conflict starts is a simple disagreement. You know, you see things differently, right? And that's not necessarily a bad thing. You, know, you share your perspective and you say that, hey, I don't agree. Uh, you 
I want to see it a little differently. You know, I, I, I see things a little differently. You know, you see, you are you're saying that, okay, that's, that is the way to do it, but I, I disagree and so on. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, right? It's a different perspective, right? And it becomes, it or it grows into a conflict, a disagreement, uh, especially when it's long drawn, right? And it goes beyond a disagreement. It goes beyond, uh, 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 beyond a disagreement to, it escalates to something where there is a breakdown of communication. There, when there is a clash of values and there is a breakdown of communication and an unwillingness to work together, right? So communication breaks down, there is a clash of values and there is a you know conflicting approach to solving certain things or if there is, you know, if we are set on our view or our perspective and unwilling to compromise, right? Saying that, okay, th this is this it's this is the this is the truth, and and uh, we cannot change it in any way. So then, it it becomes it grows to a conflict where we are unwilling to work together, right? So, so when that happens, what happens is uh, one group or one person prevents the other person or attempts to pre prevent the other prevent the other person from um, from doing that particular thing that they're called to do you know from achieving their goals maybe uh, or not cooperating with the other person to do that work particular task right saying that I'm unwilling to do that I'm, I can't work to, with you, you know? so there are some types of interpersonal conflict right so let's look at that one could be at a personal level, personal conflict, relational conflict. It's usually, you know, maybe our self-image has been hurt, our loyalty has been hurt, the confidence that we placed in the person has been has been betrayed, right? So there has been a lack of honor or respect. So it's personal level, relational level. There's also what is known as instrumental conflicts, meaning these are about goals, these are about systems, processes, right? Which typically has in a uh, happens in an organization, um, you know, maybe about a schedule, maybe about you know how should we how should we um, do the uh, how should we achieve our targets, you know, um, how long should we work, and 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 things like that, right? So these are instrumental conflicts, you know, should we should this person be in the role, and or is is this the appropriate person, or should should we have two people doing that kind of work, and and all these kinds of things, right? instrumental and conflicts of interest which which is also uh, similar lines but it's also it reflects you know the usage of resources time money staff uh, space and so on right so so in any case you know these are conflicts these are disagreements and people are unwilling to you know work with each other and maybe you know there is a definitely a breakdown of communication Right, all that happens. Right? Um, so there are ways by which we can deal with conflicts. Right. So we're just going to look at uh, some strategies for dealing with conflict, and also, you know, we're going to look at you know, as believers, you know, what can we do personally? How can I prepare myself to uh, resolve, you know, to solve conflicts? Right. Okay. Now, when we look at these strategies, now there are some things that that work, there are some things that do not work, right? So these are strategies which people normally use. These are methods that people use in the world. And right? so we're just looking at that so that we, we can identify, we can be exposed to these strategies, right? So our intent of looking at it or going through it is it does not necessarily mean that we need to use it or we should, or it is the right way to resolve a conflict. No, we're just saying, okay, this is what, if you use the strategy, this will be the outcome, right? Be prepared for it. Do you want to use it, or you know, should we avoid using it, right? So, first thing is to compete or fight. Okay, so where if you use that strategy, it is you you are fighting. You know, you are fighting in the sense you are arguing, you are presenting facts over and over again, and uh, you know, ultimately at the end there will be a winner 
there will be a loser. There's one <clears throat> who wins that argument, who wins the uh, particular discussion, right? And there is a loser. There's one who who is made to lose. You know, that person has not won. Maybe the arguments were not, or the things and whatever was put forth was not convincing enough, and there is a loss. So, so here, it creates a winner. It creates a loser. Right. So there is a sense of bad feeling, which is unavoidable. Now, what could be the outcome is that the loser will, uh, and most likely, the loser may move away, saying, I don't want to be part of this. Yes, you have won it. Yes, you have proved that what you're saying is right and what you're doing is the right thing. Uh, but I still disagree and I don't want any part of it. So it creates a rift, right? It's it's a breakdown. So somebody's won, somebody's lost, and the loser just moves. The winner is saying, okay, I won, but you're losing the person. So you be ready for that, right? Um, so if there is no further contact that's required, then maybe this, this could work. But then where you're going to be meeting the person, we're going to be you know, there's a requirement to work together in the long run. Uh, you know, this this is not the right thing. Okay. Second one is collaboration, which means that you create something, a part you you work towards creating uh, an outcome, which is good for both, which is favorable for both. So what we could call as a win-win situation. You know, you win and I also win. Right? Now this is going to be long drawn it is going to take time why because we need to work through the difficulties we need to work through the emotions we need to work through you know we need to give each other a lot of time and a lot of space to work and give each other permission to talk to vent out feelings etc so it's going to take time right and maybe we will even explore ways of you know how it is how can we work you know, together in an agreeable manner, etc. Now it's hard work, right? It's hard work, especially if one is just holding on to their point of view and not willing to, you know, uh, not willing to compromise on certain things, right? But this is this is the best, especially you know we, when we look at long term, uh, lo look at it long term, and look at the 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 relationship post the conflict you know this is this is the best strategy right there could also be compromise or negotiation right where it's a, it's better than a win lose kind of a situation but it's not really win win because um we can probably you know call it a draw right where we everybody's agreeing on something <clears throat> both the parties both the persons they are agreeing on something and it's something that is well, it's not what they want, but it's close to what they want. You know, there has been a compromise. Excuse me. There has been a, a negotiation. There has been a compromise. They're saying, okay, fine, I'll I'll part with this. No, I don't want 100. I just want 80. Right? So they are letting go of that 20, letting go of you know what they're saying that they, they need the fullness of this is saying, okay, I'm compromising. The other person also says, okay, um, okay I'll settle for 50. Right, and uh, and so there is a compromise. So they are not ex they're not ex exactly joyful, ecstatic, right? But they're not sad either. You know, they've got something, uh, so they've not really lost, right? So so this this might take a lesser time than collaboration, right? Because uh, we, we are we are saying okay, we're settling for it. We let's you know we don't have time. Can't just keep going. You know what is the best thing that you want? You know, under these circumstances, what is what is it the other person can you know um, agree upon? What is it that we can? This is these are things that we can agree upon. Can we do that? And so they agree and then go forward. So that's like a compromise, right? Um, the fourth thing is is the most dangerous thing because we are pretending that there is no conflict. Okay, so it is pretending we are denying that there is no conflict and uh, we're just continuing on as if. Uh, hey, it's it's fine. You know, just pretending. So this is uh, is a dangerous thing, right? Now it is dangerous because the problem is not solved. It is dangerous because one day it will explode, 
because the feelings and everything is just stuffed in. It's just, you know, just kept there. It's not been addressed. So one day it will just explode in anger. And uh, it, it could be for the uh, most, you know, it, it could be for the simplest of things, right? But that triggers it because it has not been addressed um, and things have just piled on. And so, you know, the, the anger is just simmering and just waiting to explode. And that happens. So because of denial now. Now, it can, you know, when you want to pick the right time to collaborate, maybe there is a shortage of time. Maybe there are, you know, we're in a hurry. We need to do this, get this done, and then we can force, focus on, you know, if that is the mindset. And you're saying, okay, I will solve it, but right now I cannot focus. We don't have the time. We don't have, you know, we have, there's too many things that we need to do right now. So we will come back to it. But for now, let's just let it pass. Right? Let's just avoid. So that is okay, right? If you're using it as a, you know, okay, today we're not going to talk about it. Today we are in a, we're not in the best of moods, best of place mentally, emotionally. So we, let's not do it today. But then let's choose another day to do it. You know, that that is good. That is okay, right? Um, so maybe you're not even having the discussion, right? So, but then mentally you have that, you made that the decision, you made the choice saying, I will address it, but not today. Right. Okay. Um, the last one is smoothing over the problem, meaning that okay, you know, it's okay, it's it's fine. You know, I just want peace, right? I just want peace. I just want you know the relationship and everything. It's fine. It's it's okay if the uh, if you are not solving this. So it it's fine in in things where you know we are able to let go and we forgive and so on. So it's fine. Uh, where you care about the relationship and also the kind of things that are done is not that critical. You know, it's something that you can overlook, um, a, and you know, okay, maybe it was a genuine mistake uh, from the, you know, from the, the point of view of the person. Maybe that person made a genuine mistake, so you're just willing to, okay, just look over it. You know, it's it's fine. Right? It was just a one-off thing. It's it's over. So it can be, uh, it's fine. Right, but then, if there are both parties involved, and then that person feels that one party feels that hey, I we need, I need to discuss this, I need to get to the root of it, and the other one fi feels that okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's okay. Then it becomes a problem. Right, so so these are ways by which we can, um, you know, we can we can one uses these strategies in order to solve a conflict, um, and it ha comes with some pros and cons. Right, so if you if you see you know this. This particular um, infograph in the diagram, it shows you know, it, when there is a concern for self, oneself, which is very high, and concern for others is low. Then normally people use this right compete or fight, right? And uh, but if person wants to you know concern is high, and also the concern for Others is also high. Then we are willing to um, do this, you know, collaborate, right? Um, but if concern for others is also low and concern for ourselves, you know, is also uh, low, then we we might, you know, in, indulge in this like a denial. Um, and smoothing over happens when concerns for health self is low, but then concern for others is high. You know, you just want that relationship. You don't want to. Talk about that problem, and so you know it happens that way, right? Okay. So, any um, questions before we go into the uh, you know, about uh, sorry about um, solving conflicts? Right? Any questions? Any doubts? Okay. Okay. So let's look at uh, you know skills for handling the conflict. And then we'll go into the process of you know handling the conflict. So one of the things is to be assertive, meaning assertive doesn't mean bossy, right? Assertive doesn't mean arrogant, but assertive means you're you're humble, but you're firm, and right? you're speaking the truth in love, right? So certain things that we need to use, uh, you know, you're not being aggressive, assertive. You know, these need to know the difference, right? So um describe the first thing is to describe the situation 
example, this is how the thing, the problem, this is what the problem is. You know, you said this, you did this, I responded, you know, I, my response was this, and therefore I had to do this. Right? So that resulted in the situation we are in right now. Okay, so you describe the situation right? objectively. Right? Don't blame the person. Don't you know? Um, uh, kind of defend yourself, but just do it objectively. Right. Second thing is to express our feelings. Okay. So when we express our feelings, we can say, you know, I was hurt. I felt let down. These I statements are uh, are really helpful because you're not blaming the other person. You know? Instead of saying, you know, uh, you made me angry, or you, you know, you you hurt me badly. So instead of doing that, you know, we turn around and we, you know, don't instead of attacking the other person, we just say, you know, what I felt, you know, I felt hurt, or I felt let down, or I felt uh, upset uh, when when this was said, when this was done. Right. So you're expressing feelings. Okay. The third thing is to move from that um, and to say. And to you know, talk about okay, well, be specific. Okay, can we take these steps? Let's take these steps. If we take these steps, if we do this, then um, you know we can solve it, right? So when we, um, um, so that, that that those are the steps. Now the, those steps that we need to take, we need to really discuss it. Or give the other person also. Um, the the liberty to talk and to share why why they did that and why they said that and sometimes we you know we when we understand that we get an understanding why did that person say that why did that person do that then it, we can actually change our position right I remember once um, you know uh, we were supposed to open the office and this is many years ago and the person who um, was supposed to open the office did not open it you know and, the, and only that person had the key and you know and all of us are just waiting outside and so just everybody's getting upset you know the things to be done and and all that and then and then we you know that person came with the key and all apologized etc and then we found out that you know because of certain condition health condition that person had to take some medication and uh, and therefore you know that resulted in that person oversleeping and all that not able to get up in the morning, right? So, um, so that's that was something that was happening in their life, in that person's life. So you're able to understand, right? And also give some, you're able to empathize, and also suggest corrective action why it should not be repeated. But at the outset, you know, everybody's upset, everybody's angry. The thing is to say, you know, you know the thing is to say, you know, this cannot be. You know, you're supposed to open it. You're supposed to be there 15 minutes early, 20 minutes early, to to open the place. Why? Why did you not? Isn't that the? Isn't that that what we agreed upon? And you know, to be angry, to be upset, and not talk. You know, all that is is a possibility. We can do that. But then, when you ask the other person, give the other person um, a chance to explain, right? You understand the situation, right? Um, certain things to help us. Now, personally, uh, as believers, as probably leaders, is is to you know do this when we are when we want to confront lovingly with truth. Uh, first thing is, of course, to pray, pray and prepare our heart. You know, we can pray in the spirit. Um, prepare your heart. You know, all these uh, anger and everything is just coming. Just you know, uh, we just feel overwhelmed by it. Just pray and prepare. Say, Lord, you know, I I want to be um, I, I want to reflect uh, your love. I want to speak the truth, but I want to do it lovingly, God, firmly, um, but without any exaggeration. And you know, I want to do that, right? So we pray and prepare our heart. Um, secondly, you know, we receive God's empowering to love and forgive, right? Um, we receive and the Holy Spirit, He will lead us. 
that he's the Holy Spirit, he's the spirit of revelation, wisdom, and you know, the Holy Spirit fills us. You know, we read in Romans 8, we from Romans 5 5, we see that the Spirit of God fills us with love. So um he brings that God kind of love into our hearts, right? So we prayed. We have been empowered by the Spirit of God with love and uh, with grace. And thirdly, we look at, we ask the Lord, so saying, God, I need wisdom. Right? It's a very tricky situation. It's a very difficult situation, God, but I need your wisdom. What should I say? What should I not say? Uh, what should I bring up? And when should I bring up these things? I need your wisdom. Right? So uh, we receive God's wisdom. And fourthly, you know, we talk about the situation. What we looked at, the third step, you know, we lovingly, we assertively, firmly speaking the truth, we address the matter. Okay, and and then we go on to resolve the matter. So we are talking about this. There's a, there is always a ebb and flow in the sense there is always rise and fall. You know, maybe temperatures could rise in the sense people will. Uh, we're talking about it because they're recounting the incident that happened, and, and emotionally, you know, they get upset and angry, and and you know, maybe shout and vent their feelings and all that. It could happen on both sides. Maybe you also suddenly you realize that, but come down, come down to where you were, and again make that decision, make that choice. And okay, let's let's move on. Okay, I've said what I have to say, but let's or I have to say what let's move on. So resolve the matter in peace. Okay. Um try to set right, okay, from you know, let's not do these things going forward. Let's take an alternate course of action. Let's do this, right? Um, let's not let's make sure that a reminder be sent. We'll make sure that this doesn't occur again. Right. So resolve it make some decisions right and there is also a need you know beyond this there is also a need to receive and extend forgiveness right because wrong has been done right at the end of the day sometimes we see that okay even if we ask person to explain and all that we see that it was it was selfishly done it was a wrong thing it was sometimes it was done knowing fully well it was wrong knowing fully well it was it will hurt the person Words were spoken, things were done. And so it was done willingly. So there is a need to extend forgiveness. Right? There is a need to receive forgiveness. You know, where you realize that you're the person who hurt, you're the person who, you know, spoke and did these things. There's a there's a place to um, uh, receive forgiveness as well from that person. So one needs to apologize. And be specific in the apology. Right? So we cannot say that you know, right from creation, all that happened. You know, uh, please forgive me all the wrong that I did to you. Uh, no, that's that's not how it is. You you be specific. You know, so please forgive me for saying this, this, and this. Please forgive me for you know, not keeping up with what I promised. I, I promised to be there, and I did not. So please forgive me. And so I'm I'm sorry about that. So make it sincere. And uh, apologize, being specific, sincere and specific, right? Um, so that will always help. You know, look at the group, look at the person, and yes, yes, it could be very humbling. Like when we realize that we are wrong, it could be very humbling. It could be, you know, there's no place for ego or pride there, but it is required, right? It is necessary. So, Give and receive forgiveness, and as believers, we can go one step further, and we can release a blessing. Right? So the Lord talks about that. You know, bless those who curse. Like pray for those who spitefully use you, and so persecute you. So blessing and praying for that person, and we release that blessing. Then immediately we sense that. Internally, we we sense that there is a sense of healing and strength that comes within because we are we are being Christ-like. Right? Um, so so that's the that's the thing. So sometimes you know we realize that with um, there's only so much you can do personally. Right? You've tried 
maybe you lack wisdom, maybe you lack experience. There's nothing wrong in asking another person to step in, you know, somebody who is who can give an unbiased opinion, somebody who can be a like a go between or a peacemaker, somebody who can actually give an un, unbiased unbiased opinion, unbiased objective view of things, you know, who can actually uh, you know, look at you and say, hey, that was wrong, and look at the other person also involved and say, hey, that was that was wrong, or you know, this is right. So somebody who's unbiased, so so you can agree, you know, both the parties, if there are two groups, or you know, if it's two individuals, you can agree upon, okay, we can this person help us out, right, and be in agreement. So um, rather than make you know if you're going around in circles you know it's just not helping you know we're just talking about it we're not able to solve it um and rather than making it worse uh, over a period of time you can always reach out right and get somebody to uh, to to intervene right so these are some things to think about uh, so what skills you know are we talking about we are talking about patience we are talking about you know being empathetic we are talking about active listening something that we heard uh, something like we learned earlier. Uh, we, we're talking about you know, all these things that are required. We're talking about you know sharing uh, the truth without accusing, without blaming, and so on. So, which means communication. So, um, so all these things are required, and this is so solving of conflicts is a good skill to have. Um, also, again. Going back to the you know the basic thing, fundamentals is that that conflicts do happen, and conflicts um, cannot be ignored. You know there is an acronym which is D I R T, like right? dirt, which means don't ignore relational tension. Right? Uh, so let me just put it on the chat. Don't ignore relational. Um, okay, so, so which means these are you know this is the starting point of the conflict. There's something that's brewing. There's something that's simmering. So don't ignore it. Um, try and address it. Right. Um, okay. So uh, any questions here? If you have any questions, uh, maybe share your own your own experience of you know, solving conflicts. You, know, you could share that. Any any thoughts? Any questions? Anything at all? So the reality is that while we discuss it, or will we, you know, will we look at it in theory? It is it is quite easy, uh, and but then to put into practice, it's going to it's going to be. I won't say it's impossible, but it it is it is difficult, right? It is challenging. Involves because it involves setting aside our pride. Sometimes it involves, uh, you know, um, going to the Lord multiple times, receiving healing for our hurts, and um, and also being very honest you know, within ourselves and with God. Right? Sometimes you can say, Lord, you know, I. I'm not, you know, some people say, right, I'm, I'm not angry, I'm not angry. But then they are very angry on the inside. So it means that you be aware, self-aware, and be very truthful both to yourself and to God. And uh, if there's any offense, um, just to get that cleared, to tell the Lord, God, I'm, I'm deeply offended, deeply hurt. I need your grace. And, and again, make that choice, make that decision. Okay, I'm going to overcome. Right? I'm not let, going to let this pull me down. I'm going to overcome. I'm going to go beyond this. Right? Okay. No doubts? No questions? Okay, which means everything is good. There are no conflicts. 
<laughs> okay, super. That's a good place to be in. Okay, so let's uh, look at uh, you know uh, another uh, aspect. Let's, let's just look at um, the introduction of this uh, next chapter, uh, which is creativity and uh, critical thinking. Just probably define some terms here, and uh, and uh, and then we'll look at it in detail in our next class. Right. So okay. Okay. So um, creativity, critical thinking. Okay, so um, what is it? Right? Creativity is a, it's a way of new way of looking at things. It's a, it's a, it's when you uh, look at things differently. You look at things with your imagination, or you think it's so. It's really the ability to make something new, right? With the use of our imagination, our original idea, right? It is also Something that's something that was not existing before, and you bring it through your, you know, creative um, skill. Right? So, so we see that our God is a very creative, you know, is is very creative. Right? The most creative person in the entire universe is our God. Right. So you see the creativity in creation, in the things that he has created. Right? If you look at nature, if you look at things around, you see that hey, everything is, it's, there's so much detail this in, in the design. And there's so much, um, so much of imagination, so much of thought, and so much beauty in, in the design. Right? So it talks about the designer being a creative one. Right? And if you look at the human body itself, you don't have to look out, but you know, within and see how we are created and the bible talks about how we are fearfully and wonderfully made you know? uh, you know, so many so much of detail and and science is you know further and further uh, increasingly just proving this over and over again um, because if you look at the dna in our body and so much of information is packed into that dna strand which is there in one single cell and uh, it so much of information that how that single cell grows to be you grows to be me that information about everything you know skin color hair color um, organs and, and hair and all that is packed into that microscopic you know cell and that microscopic strand uh, the double helix strand which is called the dna right so so much of information is packed so if you look at you know creation itself it just talks about the creative um, power and the creative ability of the creator right so we just an awe of him do that so we being his creation and we being created in the image of god you know, we are creative beings right? there is creativity resident within us you know we are creative in solving problems, so creativity. When we look at it, it does. It just doesn't mean you know these things that we have listed here. You know, a picture, a book, a song, a new idea, uh, a painting, uh, a carving. You know, it's it's all that, right? But it also means that you bring in a solution, you know, a very creative solution, meaning a creative um, solving of problems, uh, a creative way of doing things which is what you know the word innovation is right? innovation means to make changes to make to use uh, you know to to make creative changes in something where you introduce a new thought a new idea a new product new method and so in, you're innovating right so creativity also leads to discovery which means to you know to take to something absolutely new, you're just discovering it. But creativity also leads to innovation, which means that something that is already there, something that is already established, but you're making changes to its you know, the process and method and so on. So, um, uh, so by just innovating, it brings uh, a lot of change. It brings a lot of fruit. Um, it makes things effective, right? So, like somebody said, uh, this a Nobel Prize winner, you know, a scientist, and 
the best way to have a good idea is to have lots of ideas which means that you continue to you know uh, think th continue to generate ideas and uh, and then we will have uh, you know good ideas right so so we see that uh, uh, when we talk about creativity when we talk about innovation right we um, we look at uh, things differently okay we look at things in a different way okay let me just share a uh, screen with you just one second um, um okay So, uh, I may have shared this already. Uh, anyway, I, I don't remember. So let me. Okay, do you see this? You see the PDF, right? Okay. What do you see there? Do you see a person? Okay, you need to tell me because I I'm not sure what I'm projecting. Is it the notes or um? Do you see a person there? Uh, it's first time we see your question. This was face, right? Yeah. 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 So now, do you see the face? Yes. Okay. She's face in black. Yeah. Now, what do you see? Oh, liar. Okay. You see the word liar, right? So it is actually the word liar which is written there, and if you see just because of the position of the way in which it was written it is actually the is actually the face of a person right so you see that it's a creativity is a it's an out of the box it's a different way of looking at it right? and we can actually develop this skill of creativity okay so one other thing that we see is uh, this what do you see there Right. Uh, yeah. Face of the person, but it's also the person who's looking at you, and also a person who is, you know, looking to, you know, to your right. You know? We see two things at the same time. So, right. So yeah. So just wanted to share that, and uh, first know that it's it's a different perspective. You know, to think out of the box, to 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 really you know stretch. In, in those ways, to start thinking in those ways. You know, what else can I do? So that breeds or that creates uh, this particular skill. You know, maybe it's it's just there uh, inside, and we have not unlocked. Right? There's a you know we're just thinking on the same ways, thinking on. We're not really started thinking on those lines. Right? So we can be creative. You know. Um, okay. So a, a small example would be. Okay, so let's say you have a you have a pencil, right? An everyday object. We have a pencil. Okay, you have maybe yeah one pencil. Okay. Um, let me just see. Okay, so what are? Where did I post that? Okay. Um, Okay, so it's a it's a simple pencil, you know that. So think of different ways by which you can use the pencil, for which you can use this pencil. Okay, what what can it be used for? Just think of it. Just you know, and maybe you can, you know, put it on the chat. Just type it down and put it on the chat. What are the different ways, you know? Um, just put it together, right? If one person is, just take a minute to write down what are the different ways, different, uh, yeah, you, uh, actually, Prince, you, know, you put everything together and then put it on the chat. So then it'll be like, okay, uh, maybe three things or four things, um, right? So. Or if you're not able to like like type it all in and then you know put it uh, do enter once uh, that's also fine you just set it separately okay. so everyone right take a take a minute think uh, write down all the uses OK. 
Okay. Okay. Um, so if if you you know if you you can just put it on the chat. Okay. So let's just read some of the responses that have come in. Okay. Um, okay. Prince says drawing and also the lead inside the pen uh, pencil can be used to produce little amount of electrical energy. Wow. Okay. Um, I didn't know that. Right. So Chaya Paul. Uh, draw a line like a scale. Okay, so you, you, you are saying use the pen, pencil like a scale. Yes, and use two fingers with pencil, we can make a circle. Okay, how do we do that? Uh, okay, maybe uh, use it like that. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Do you like, like a circle, draw a circle, keep something, and then you, you know, do that? Draw circle, okay. Um, we can use to color print dots. Yeah, so all that is something that is so drawing. Like Nikhil says, we can use it for mark. Um, Jack in writing, coloring, sketching, taking notes, drawing, art, okay. To draw some miniature building, okay, right. Okay, so so everything, you know, there's a lot of things that, that we can use it for. Um, just think, what else can you use it for? You know, apart from drawing, what else can you use it for? Okay, so you know, like Prince said, you can use it for electric energy. The lead inside can be used to generate energy. You know, I, I, I'm not sure how, but anyway. Um, okay, the pencil shavings can be used to make flowers. Okay, so you can stick it, and it can you know use it in different ways. Pencil can be as versatile as your imagination, okay. But we're looking at specifics, right? What can you use it for? Okay, I'm thinking maybe pencil can be used as a bookmark, right? I place it as a placeholder. And I'm also thinking if I have two pencils, you know, can I use it as a chopstick? Yeah. Um, what else can I use? So, so I'm thinking, if I don't have earbuds, that's going to be very dangerous. <laughs> but can I use a pencil, right? So you know, so you see that you you begin to think various uses of the pencil and not just the traditional use of you know drawing. So similarly, you know that. What what does that do? That you know, this is a pretty typical exercise that they do, right? Okay, if you have a brick, okay, what are some ways you can use that brick and so on? So, um, so these 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 actually exercises our creativity, right? It, uh, forces us to think out of the traditional ways of thinking, right? Out of the box. So yeah, so just wanted to say that uh, yeah, God is creative. He has created us to be creative, just like him in his image. And this is a skill. Um, uh, it's an ability that all of us have, and it's a skill that we can develop. Okay. Okay, we'll stop here and we'll pick it up next class. Thank you. God bless.